Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft. And if you find your Bob CNC is not giving you good cuts, either inconsistent on the surface cutting or when you switch tools and it should be running the same tool path and it's running a slightly different tool path, there are two things to take care of to solve that problem. I'm going to take you out to my Bob CNC and show you how to fix this. Uh, here is an example of a surface cut deviation that I had where the tool is going around making the cut and then when it's doing some other cuts it comes down and it's at, the tool is actually at a different level. And that makes for a horrible sanding job especially in tight places like this. Where you see it happened in, uh, around the words, it's happened along here. The other tool path issue you may be running into is when you're running a profile like that with one tool and then maybe you come in with a uh, chamfering tool or a v-carving bit to cut a chamfer here and that tool is off center. So we have two different scenarios here that I'm going to teach you how to fix on your Bob CNC. This comes down to having your machine tuned up and set up just right. Now Unfortunately, the instructions don't lay some of this stuff out, so I'm here to help you do that. So one of the first things is you know that this machine is a belt-driven machine. And if the belt is not set right, then you are going to get some deviation, particularly if the belt isn't tight enough. Now, some people may say belts are not good to have on a machine, but they are. If they, if they weren't any good, we wouldn't use them on cars, right? And they use timing belts in machines all the time professionally. The thing is, is this machine is meant to cut to very close tolerances. And in order to get that, this belt needs to be set up just right. Because if it goes one way, if the belt is loose and it goes one way, and then it's coming back, well the belt looseness is really affecting where that tool ends up at in the position that you want it to, or whether it's going to land exactly where you want it to. So what you need to do with your Y-axis belt or the gantry belt is get it tight. Timing belts need to be tight, especially when they're cutting tolerances. So I want to show you how tight you need to make this. You want to get sound out of it like a guitar string. So you can hear this. It's not very loud. I, I probably will make it a little bit tighter but the way to tell if you're tight enough, you take that belt and twist it like that. This is almost tight enough for this job, I don't want, or this machine. I don't want to pull it too tight because it is wood construction. However, this way, this framing is very strong. So, um, But this job right here that I ran has run really good in my X and Ys. I didn't have any uh, deviations when I changed tools. So you just want to make sure you get some sound out of it. When you start to press them together, you're getting tension. You can't easily put them together. So I have to tighten this up just a little bit more. The other one is your x-axis drives. So that's the one that's coming back and forth to you. You have two belts, one on the right side and one on the left side. These belts need to be tensioned to the same tightness. And the way you do that, again, is the guitar string sound. You're basically going to tune it. So tighten up your belts till you start to get sound out of it. So I've got a bit of a bass sound. And I have the bass sound out of this one. And they're at the same frequency. So now these two belts are tensioned properly with each other and that'll help keep the gantry from doing one of these things. So that's going to help take care of your deviation as a tool is as one tool's going around like that and then you put another tool in it and it ends up exaggerated way up here. So the depth issue when you get these little steps here there are two things that I want you to pay attention to. Number one, you know that there is dust that gets on the rails if you don't get your vacuum uh, system on there. And that dust, it crushes down and it causes your roller bearings to have to run over it. And since no dust builds up underneath here, it's going to want to pull up. So it'll ride up and down, up and down, and that's very exaggerated. But that will affect your surface finish on the job that you're doing. 
The other thing is the tension or the tightness of your roller bearings. Now I'm going to move this over here so I can show you better. You probably already know that there is flex in the gantry on this machine. Now if you can take your gantry and move it more than maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.02 of an inch, then your bearings are loose. And what I mean by that is your bearings need to be literally grabbing these rails and hugging them. If you can move your gantry, let me zoom in a little bit. If you can take your housing and move it and see this bearing, roller bearing, actually moving back and forth just a little bit, that way, and we get in the right orientation, that way, then your your bear, uh, roller bearing is loose on this rail here and that's going to cause some deviation as well in your cut, especially in your surface cutting. So what you want to do is get in there and snug that thing up, turn your cam nut that's right here, turn it up a little bit more so it's grabbing your rails and it's actually tight on there and then try to wiggle it again. So I have a little bit of wiggle, but it's nothing like I had in the beginning, and I don't have the quality issues that I was originally having. And you want to check the same thing on your router head when you're wiggling it back and forth. If you have any play whatsoever, your Z-axis bearings need to be snugged up against the roller bearings tighter. When you get those tight, this thing runs really well. And one more thing, when you get that dust on the rails, and I'm sure that you know that you get it, um, that's kind of a pain. Now there's uh, one way you can clean that. I just take steel wool and just rub it across there, it takes it right off. Now I am developing a little product that's actually going to clip on there and just wipe your rails all the time so that you never have that kind of buildup on that machine on the rails. If you want uh, first dibs at that, then get on my list, which is down below, because people that are on my list are going to get first dibs at this product when I start to develop it or when I start to get it my pipeline. Uh, we are actually in the development stage now and I expect about three weeks. So if you want first dibs at that, then get on the list and I will announce it within my uh, within the list. All right, if this video is helpful, give me a thumbs up and maybe a comment down below. You'll find that your Bob CNC is going to run a heck of a lot better once you get this tuned up. So I will do another video for you about how to tune your entire machine up because I realize that has to be done every once in a while so you can keep that machine in prime shape. All right, this is Garrett, and I will talk to you next time.